It is a great honor to have Dr. William Joyce, Innovation Lead, Industrial Decarbonization, UK Research and Innovation, to give us a key speech, keynote speech today. Although Dr. Joyce cannot join us in person today, he has recorded a video to set the scene for today's discussions. Let's watch the video now. Good morning. My name is William Joyce. I'm Innovation Lead for Industrial Decarbonisation at UKRI. I'm the Technical Lead for a £210 million programme, the Industrial Decarbonisation Challenge Fund, which is investing in carbon capture and storage technologies and hydrogen to decarbonise industrial clusters in the UK. And today I want to walk you through the work that we're doing and to give you an overview of industrial decarbonisation strategy in the UK. I'm going to start the presentation uh, with some background. We've seen a tremendous policy acceleration in industrial decarbonisation in the last few years and some major funding commitments from government. Indeed, when we started this programme, we were aligned with a policy called the Bayes Industrial Clusters Mission. This identified the largest six industrial regions in the UK. You can see them as these big green dots on the infographic on the left-hand side of the screen. Southampton, the Humber, Teesside, Grangemouth in Scotland, Merseyside and South Wales. This policy set a target of achieving one low carbon industrial cluster by 2030 and the world's first net zero carbon industrial cluster by 2040. But then after the Climate Change Committee's recommendation in May 2019, the UK government amended their Climate Change Act in June 2019 from an 80% greenhouse gas reduction to 100% greenhouse gas reduction, or essentially net zero by 2050. This is written in law. Britain is leading the way globally with the first member of the G7 group of industrialized nations to legislate for net zero emissions. It's a majorly ambitious target set by a major polluting industrialized nation. In March 2020, our chancellor set aside 800 million pounds towards deploying carbon capture and storage in two industrial clusters by 2030. But in November of that year, our Prime Minister doubled that ambition. We're now working towards deploying carbon capture and storage in at least four industrial clusters by 2030, two by the mid 2020s, with a one billion pound government commitment to capture and store between 20 to 30 million tonnes of carbon across the economy each year by 2030. It's fair to say we've not seen anything progress quite this fast with such ambition in this field in public policy. The importance of carbon capture, carbon capture for this country's net zero ambitions is very clear. It's fantastic to see the projects that we fund generating tremendous global momentum behind their plans and driving those ambitious plans forward, including some of those which I will touch upon later on in the presentation. This slide here has been taken from the UK government's industrial decarbonisation strategy. It's a timeline that industry will follow to achieve net zero by 2050. I've already spoken about deploying carbon capture in two industrial clusters by the mid 2020s and another two by 2030. But a very important milestone in this timeline is that 2040, the world's first net zero industrial cluster for the UK. We also have a hydrogen strategy in the UK with the first major economy to publish a hydrogen strategy and this promotes a twin track approach towards hydrogen production with both blue and green hydrogen treated equally. And I want to touch upon the feasibility of carbon capture and storage as a technology for the UK. The UK has a significant offshore CO2 storage potential on our continental shelf. And four of those industrialized regions have access to viable offshore CO2 storage. This tremendous capacity is equivalent to around the remaining EU27 countries combined. 
and therefore in theory could serve both our domestic demand and also the rest of Europe. In context, estimations suggest we must store between 75 and 175 million tonnes of carbon a year by 2050 to attain our net zero status. In theory, we have hundreds of years of storage to meet our demand. And in combination with our carbon capture and storage projects being in advanced stages of development, entering construction operation later this decade, the UK has a strong potential to become a world leader in carbon capture technologies. Our government estimate that the global CCS market could be worth 260 billion by 2050, and the UK has the potential to capture 200 billion of that market. It's also important to recognize the significance of hydrogen as a low carbon source of fuel. So hydrogen produced from natural gas deployed in parallel with CCS will create scalable business models. First, we can decarbonize our industrial sites, then we can lay the foundations for broader regional hydrogen economies. I want to quickly touch upon some of the major funding streams for industrial decarbonisation in the pipeline in the UK. I've spoken about the Industrial Decarbonisation Challenge Fund, of which I'm the innovation lead for. We also have an Industrial Energy Transformation Fund, £315 million a CCS infrastructure fund, which will take our projects, which are currently going through those engineering studies into construction and operation uh, later this decade, and also a net zero hydrogen fund announced in the UK hydrogen strategy, which supports a twin track approach towards hydrogen production in the UK. These are the projects which we support through our deployment portfolio. Nine first of a kind decarbonization projects, six onshore, three offshore projects. These projects are currently undergoing the complex engineering studies ready for infrastructure deployment at the end of the program. The complex configurations of industry, which have come together with a common goal to decarbonize on a scale not seen anywhere else in the world before. We recognize the most cost-effective ways of decarbonizing are within industrial clusters rather than sites or sectors alone, as we're able to share knowledge and share learnings amongst each other to make a more cost-effective and efficient process of decarbonization. And also in parallel to decarbonizing, we're looking to drive inward investment into these projects, create and protect jobs for a future low carbon industrial sector and boost the competitiveness of the regions in which these projects are um, situated. I now want to just quickly walk you through a couple of case studies. The HiNet project in the Northwest received £33 million of grant funding from our programme. They're developing a full scale rollout of hydrogen in the Northwest. This hydrogen will be centred at the Stanley refinery. It will then decarbonise proximal industrial sites. And then after that, lay those foundations for that broader regional hydrogen economy, decarbonizing 2 million homes, the heat for 2 million homes. Uh, there's, there's hydrogen storage in Cheshire salt caverns, and also a complementary carbon capture and storage network, which will take the carbon emissions from the production of hydrogen and also from in other industrial processes in the region and store those safely under the seabed in the depleted gas fields in the Liverpool Bay uh, offshore uh, sites. In this slide here, we support two projects in the Humber region. The Humber Zero project uh, will decarbonize the Phillips 66 oil refinery through a first of a kind carbon capture mechanism on the fluid catalytic cracker, and also the UK's largest combined heat and power plant at VPI Immingham site. And then the Zero Carbon Humber project will roll out a dual pipeline, a parallel hydrogen and carbon capture transmission network connecting the region's major emission sites. It's also anchored by a major hydrogen production unit at the Sultan Chemical Park, a 600 megawatt autothermal reformer. And those CO2 emissions captured um, up to 17 million tonnes a year will be pumped out under the sea in the North Sea and stored safely in perpetuity in ge geological rock formation. 
Our deployment projects are world leading, they're flagship projects for the UK, and the significance of these projects to decarbonizing UK industry is absolutely clear. They will make a significant contribution to our national net zero effort. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak today.